Okay, another question we have uh, was from a patient who has a large meningioma, parasagittal, parietal area, and a little in the occipital, as well as also the superior sagittal sinus involvement. What would the risk factors uh, be, the prevalent risk factors that you see, and what other options are there for patients with SSS involvement? Okay, so SSS, that stands for superior sagittal sinus. As I mentioned, there's a giant vein that goes right down the middle between the left and the right side. And the person said it was in the parietal near occipital. So that would, this is occipital, this is parietal. So a tumor in this area, what would be the danger of taking it out? Well, often if you have a tumor pushing down in this area, it'll mess up the visual pathways. So this occipital lobe controls everything from the middle over on the opposite side of the body. So left occipital controls from the middle over to the right, all the vision. So let's say you have a tumor here, it may already be causing visual problems and, and a loss of vision on the right. But if you do the surgery and you injure that area of brain, you may end up being able to see nothing from the midline over. Um, also, if it's up in this area, it may affect this green band of brain right here, which is the sensory motor, I mean the sensory cortex. So changes here can cause loss of sensation or abnormal sensation on the opposite side of the body. And if it's even further up here, which is defined as the frontal lobe at this area, it could involve the motor cortex, and as mentioned, damage to the motor cortex here on the left side could affect movement on the right side of the body. Most people, 90% of people are right-handed, and right-handed people, most of them have speech on the left side of the brain, so the speech hearing is here, and the speech kind of comes into the back of the brain where it's processed, and then you think of what you want to say, and it comes out by an area up here in the front of the brain called Broca's area. So a tumor in this area, if it causes injury to the brain or the surgery causes injury, you can have significant problems processing verbal information or reading information. So you can lose your speech function. So these are all the, in 90% of people, so these are all the issues related to um, a tumor in this area, especially if you're right-handed and you have dominant speech on the left side of the brain. Are there other options for treatment, such as radio surgery for <clears throat> these type of patients? Well, and also getting back to the uh, previous question, superior sagittal sinus, tumors that involve the sinus can be quite dangerous because let's say you take out a tumor here and it injures this area. If this area is injured severely, it can cause death because the brain drains all the venous blood back through this area, back down to the back of the brain. If you injure this area from about here forward, for instance, if you have a tumor here, it doesn't really matter. You can take it, the whole sinus out. Um, but sort of getting to the next uh, question, sometimes what I will do is if I have a big tumor here, I will take as much of the tumor out as I can safely and I'll stop right at the edge of the superior sagittal sinus because I don't want to get into that big vein. And I'll leave it there. And then we can follow it with month, every four months, every six months with MRI scans. Should it grow at that point, we can always send the patient back to CyberKnife or GammaKnife. And I'll just show you kind of an example. I just had a CyberKnife patient this morning who had this exact problem. If this is the uh, shape of the head, this is the superior sagittal sinus here and then the veins kind of come down the back of the, uh, the head and go from the, to the left and the right down to the back of the skull um, and then end up in the jugular veins down here. Well, this tumor was here. A large portion of the tumor had been taken out and then the tumor started growing back in this area here. So with the CyberKnife radiation uh, computer system, you can literally take the MRI and draw on every serial cut of the MRI where you want the, sig the uh, radiation to go, and it will zap that area with a big arm that goes around and shoots beams through it like this from all different directions until this area receives a lot of radiation and the rest of the brain receives little, and that will almost always stop the tumor growth unless it's a malignant tumor and they can continue to grow sometimes even through that. That brings up another question that we had on one of the pages. Um, do you consider a meningioma malignant or a benign tumor? There's varying um, information that patients are getting and they want to get 
clear on how you determine, determine one versus the other. So a lot of uh, the language in cancer is very ambiguous. You know, meningiomas are tumors, they are cancers. But um, if you took all the meningiomas that we see and made a graph like this, or just a, this is 100% of meningiomas, I would say that, you know, like 90, 95% are in what we call grade one. And when you look at a grade one tumor under the microscope, and this is all tumor cells, and you apply something called KI67 antibody, you may see a couple of cells dividing. And if that is less than, I don't know, let's say 2%, of all the tumor cells, then that's a pretty low proliferation rate. In other words, at any point in time, less than 2% of cells are dividing, and there are other characteristics that make it considered benign. So most of the, most meningiomas are in this category. Then there's a, another level called grade two or atypical, and then there are, um, grade three really, and these are more malignant. So grade two, atypical, and grade three are, are much more dangerous. So in general, if you operate on somebody that has a grade one tumor and take it out and you get the whole thing out, there's a grading system called the Simpson grading. But if you do that, you're pretty much sure it's not gonna come back. Most of these tumors, as I mentioned, grow on this leathery membrane called the dura, and they usually attach to the dura like that. So if you take out the tumor plus the little area where it's growing to from here to here, you're done for most grade ones. You can watch them just to make sure that it doesn't come back in the future. However, grade two tumors will often have little feeders that have creeped out further so you can take the tumor out, and then years later you may start getting tumor growth out here. Mm -hmm. So then you may either have to go back and operate again or do radiation. And I have had patients, um, sadly, who have, for instance, a tumor that starts out as a little tumor here, you take it out, and then tumor kind of comes back again, you radiate it, comes back again, you radiate it, and you go back and operate again. You keep doing this and the patients um, will eventually die of these tumors. and that's patients in that category. And if you look at their tumors under the microscope, instead of having like one or two cells dividing in a big field, you may see that, you know, there is something like 30% of the cells at any given time dividing. And those are very aggressive and have to be treated after surgery always with radiation. So most of these tumors, you take them out, you're done. No mm -hmm. radiation, no chemo, no anything. Mm -hmm. For these tumors, we have to be super vigilant. We take them out, we then radiate them. We keep a close eye on them. If they come back, we radiate them again or we operate on them again. And uh, I would say that there are chemotherapies available, but they're not. Now with certain um, genomic testings, we may be able to find certain pathways that can be treated with existing pathway inhibiting drugs, but that's experimental and there's not a real whole lot of data about that right now. Perfect. I think that's all we have from questions out there um, at this point. So I would encourage anyone that has any more questions to please comment below this video on our comments section on braincancer.org. And if you have further questions, you can contact us at the Ivy Center for Advanced Brain Tumor Treatment with the number that Dr. Cobbs gave at the beginning of this video. Thank you very much. Thank you.